minus 20 degrees Celsius feels like minus 33. So we're gonna do another indoor video here and we're gonna talk about mountain biking 101 as I'll call it. In this video, we're gonna go over kind of the basics of a mountain bike. What is remote lockout? What is lockout? Does my suspension have lockout? What is a derailleur? How does my bike shift? And things like that. So if you wanted to know kind of top 10 questions you've never asked before, let's give it a go. Okay, so first we're gonna check out multiple different types of suspension. This is front suspension. This here has no lockout to it. So this bike here has a very simple suspension set to it, has a spring inside of it, which is adjustable with these little dials here to increase or decrease the preload of the spring or this initial tension of that spring. The next level up from that is a lockout fork. So in this situation, you're able to actually manually turn the suspension off so this won't compress under pressure. That way, when you pedal, your suspension isn't absorbing that kind of bounce. Really simple. This is your basic open and close setup with spring adjustment on the far side. Okay, so the next level up of suspension you'll see is actually going to an air fork. Multiple different brands make it. Essentially, what that means is they've removed the spring from one side and put in air canister. Going to an air fork makes it a lot more tunable for your own rider weight. You're able to kind of tune it up a little bit more specifically and it'll react based on your weight as opposed to a pre-manufactured spring with minimal of adjustment. Pretty much all of these ones, air fork, will come with some sort of lockout. This one again is much smoother and has more resistance for multiple kind of options of level. The last choice of setup is a remote setup. So this one has that air fork feature but now has a remote cable which runs up to a switch on the handlebar allowing you to turn the suspension on and off on the ride. Okay, next thing we're looking at is what is a derailleur and what does it do? You may have heard this term a few times throughout the bike industry. A derailleur is literally what it says. This whole mechanism here on the rear end is the derailleur. This literally derails the chain so it can make the shift. Most of them are pulled by a cable. Obviously with some high end ones, you end up getting actuation with an electronic motor, whether that's wirelessly or not. The cable is ran up through the frame, sometimes externally, most of the time internally now. And then you have your shifters to a degree up on the handlebar. This bike here has a 12 speed on it. My hand for reference comes with a huge set of gears on the back and a simple one gear on the front. Whereas this comes with a seven speed setup, hand for reference. As you can see, a much smaller gear setup on the rear because it has three gears on the front to compensate. Okay, so we're gonna check out some brakes now. They are all majority switching to a disc based system, but let's go over it. This here is what you'd call a rim brake where a rubber pad simply bites onto the rim. Pretty much all of these are pulled by a cable attached to the handlebar lever. The next setup is a hydraulic system where it has a small reservoir up at the top here, as you can see, and a hydraulic fluid runs down all the way to the brakes themselves to be pushed. There is a braking system with a cable running to a disc. I just don't have one here. Essentially, instead of having a hydraulic cable, it just has that standard cable running through it and it pulls the discs closed. Seat post, pretty simple, nothing to explain there. But something you'll have heard a lot about is a dropper post. Dropper posts are essentially fancy office chairs. So when the weight is on them and you push the button, it goes down. When there's no weight on it and you push the button up at the controls, the seat fires up. So you want something like this to allow you to get that fast in the seat pedaling position, but 
Now when it becomes rough or downhill and that seat is kind of high and in your way, you just simply push it down and get it out of your way and you can remove up to 170 mils of travel. All right, so those are some tips and tricks or kind of technical lingo of what you may need to know when looking at a mountain bike, which the salesperson might skip over or you might read online and not fully understand. Hopefully this helps you out. Otherwise, um, I guess we'll see you next time. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like down below and comment if this helped you out.